Hi everyone, in this video we will be discussing about the osmotic fragility test. Let's first revisit the normal shape of the RBC. Taking a look at the figure here, you can see that from the top, the RBC might seem like a perfect circle or a perfect sphere with a bit of discoloration in the center. But when we look at the RBC from the side, you can see that it is actually a flattened sphere similar to a donut in shape. And in fact, the central powder that we first see in the top view is actually caused by an indentation in the RBC shape. Now the normal appearance of our RBC is caused by the variety of proteins found on the RBC cell membrane and these proteins hold on to the cytoskeleton in such a way that the cell is flattened. The flattened appearance of the cell is important because this allows the RBC to be flexible enough to move into tight spaces or to get out of tight spaces such as our capillaries. Now in some cases, these proteins might be defective and this results in a phenomenon called spherocytosis. The cells or spherocytes are totally spherical and they are characterized as having a decreased surface to volume ratio. In this figure, you can see the effect of osmotic pressure on red blood cells. In an isotonic solution, the red blood cells maintain their normal shape because there is a constant efflux and efflux of water into the cell. Meanwhile, in a hypotonic solution, this is a solution that is characterized by having less dissolved solids than the cell, more water enters the cell and this causes the cell to swell up and eventually burst. Now, the osmotic fragility test measures the capacity of red blood cells to withstand different saline concentrations. And this is actually the test that is used to confirm hereditary spherocytosis. This is because spherocytes easily lyse when exposed to hypotonic solutions because of their decreased surface to volume ratio. So essentially, spherocytes are already swelled up and it doesn't take much for them to burst. Now, in contrast, sickle cells or target cells, which have an increased surface to volume ratio, are able to withstand osmotic stress. And the osmotic fragility test or OFT can also be used to characterize these types of disorders. Your osmotic fragility test can be performed in two ways. The first is the Sanford method, in which hemolysis is visually observed, and this is a semi-quantitative way to measure your osmotic fragility. We also have the DACES method, in which hemolysis is measured using a spectrophotometer, and this is a quantitative way to measure our osmotic Both of these methods use defibrinized blood. Fibrin is a factor that is used in the clotting process. So in order to remove fibrin, this is the method you use. Using a syringe, collect venous blood, and then you transfer the blood into a flask with glass beads. Now the glass beads are there to activate the clotting process. Now you agitate the flask by moving it in a figure of eight motion, and you'll notice that as you do this, the glass beads actually make a sound uh, as they hit the walls of the flask. Now you continue to agitate the flask until the sound of the beads can no longer be heard. And this means that the beads have sufficiently activated clotting and that fibrin strands have already formed clots around your glass beads. And this is what dampens the sound. Let's now take a look at the procedure for our Sanford method. So first and foremost, you have to prepare your defibrinized blood. After that, prepare 14 test tubes that are arranged in a test tube rack. The test tubes should be labeled starting from the left side with the number 25 and going down the test tube rack until you reach number 12. Next, dispense 0.5% NaCl and distilled water to the tubes following the guide you can see on this slide. Next, we add a drop of blood to each tube and mix well. The tubes should be allowed to stand at room temperature for at least two hours. After the time, 
read the tube starting from tube 25 to the last tube and observe for complete and initial hemolysis. A slight pink coloration of the supernatant fluid indicates initial hemolysis, and a clear red solution free of sediment indicates complete hemolysis. The salt concentrations in these two tubes should be noted and recorded. Now we calculate percent NaCl by multiplying the tube number indicating the hemolysis with a factor of 0 0.02. We report the computed values and note down the variety of reference values that we have. Let's now proceed with the DAISYS method. First, you will need to prepare defibrinized blood, and you will also need to prepare a 1% sodium chloride solution. This will be now known as your stock solution. After, obtain test tubes and label them from numbers 1 to 12. Arrange them with 1 being on the leftmost part of your rack and 12 being on the rightmost part. Then, dispense your stock solution and distilled water following the table on this slide. Our main goal is to have a decrease in concentration of sodium chloride. So for example, in test tube 1, we would like to have 0.85% of sodium chloride. And to do this, we need to add 4.25 ml of our stock solution with 0.75 ml of our distilled water. The total volume should be 5 ml. So once you complete this, you should have a decreasing gradient from 0.85% sodium chloride to 0.3% sodium chloride. After you have dispensed your sodium chloride and water, add 0.05 ml or 50 microliters of defibrinated blood to each test tube. Mix them well and allow them to stand at room temperature for at least 30 minutes. After, Centrifuge the tubes for at least 5 minutes at 2000 RPM. Extract the supernatant of the solution and measure the absorbance of these supernatants at 540 nanometers using a spectrophotometer. You can use the 0.85% sodium chloride without blood as your blank. After measuring the absorbance of all supernatants from all 12 tubes, plot the values. The percentage hemolysis should be on the y-axis, while the percentage NaCl or the NaCl concentration should be on the x-axis. You can also do this vice versa. To compute for the percent hemolysis of each tube, use the following equation. Percent hemolysis is equal to the absorbance of the tube in question minus the absorbance of the tube with 0.85% sodium chloride. Divide the whole thing by the absorbance of the tube with 0% sodium chloride minus the absorbance of the tube with 0.85% sodium chloride. And after, multiply the entire thing with 100. Note the normal values for this method. At 0.3% sodium chloride, there should be 97 to 100% hemolysis. At 0.35%, there should be 90 to 99% hemolysis. At 0.40%, there should be 50 to 90% hemolysis. Meanwhile, at 0.45%, there should be 0 to 45% hemolysis. At 0.50% NaCl, there should be 0 to 5% hemolysis. And at 0.55 to 0.85% NaCl, there should be no hemolysis. Here we can see the erythrocyte osmotic fragility curve. Notice in the figure the three curves, but I want you to take note of curve B. This is the normal fragility curve for our erythrocytes. Meanwhile, if you notice that the osmotic fragility is increased, this means that there might be the presence of spherocytes. Meanwhile, if the osmotic fragility is decreased, this could mean the presence of abnormal cells like sickle cells or codocytes. Now for our special considerations, anticoagulants containing oxalates are undesirable because they alter the pH, so make sure to avoid using them. Again, make sure to use your defibrinized blood or your heparinized blood. Also, the test should be set up within two hours of our blood collection, or within six hours if the specimen is refrigerated.
Now for the clinical significance of the osmotic fragility test, an increased fragility could be caused by the following. Spherocytes, senile or old cells, hereditary spherocytosis, and our autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Please note that OFT is the confirmatory test for your hereditary spherocytosis. And uh, you can see here that hereditary spherocytosis can be differentiated from autoimmune hemolytic anemia via the direct antiglobulin test. So your hereditary spherocytosis should be DAT negative and your autoimmune hemolytic anemia should be DAT positive. In contrast, decreased fragility can be caused by the following, sickle cells or drepanocytes, target cells, otherwise known as your codocytes or leptocytes, also your hypochromic cells and your reticulocytes. All right, so that ends our discussion. If you would like to read up more about the things we just discussed, please check out this reference. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.